Good evening, good evening. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Looks like no one's joined us yet, but I'm sure there will be a few that will be joining us. Um, to those that are listening via YouTube, good evening and welcome to Iron Sharpens Iron. Praise God. We welcome you all. We, we're thankful for another evening of fellowship and Bible study on tonight. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, those that are listening, don't be shy. Um, if you've been listening for some time, chime on in and join us. You know, we have the link here. If you need the link, um, you know, let us know. We'll be, we'll be more than glad to make sure you have the link so you can actually um, join in on the conversation, join in on the Bible study. Praise God. So just wanted to put that out there. Thank you all again for joining us we're looking forward to this uh bible study on tonight and this wonderful word that's ahead of us praise god so just before we get started for those that may be new and listening or um uh, joining us for the first time i just want to say that we are iron sharpens iron our mission is to collectively come together weekly for bible study and for fellowship as we get to know each other personally, we believe in building genuine, godly relationships. We want to get to know you and we want you to get to know us in a real kind of way so that we can fellowship um, with transparency and with genuinity. Because only then can we truly come to love one another. When we fellowship with one another, get to know one another, um, we become more personable. So that's what our aim is. Also just wanted to share with you a scripture that I like to uh, read and it's first John 3:23. And this is his command to believe in the name of his son, Jesus, Yahshua, Christ, and to love one another. That is the command. Praise God. So, um, I'm going to open up in prayer, and then after that, we will be in the hands of Derek Jennings, which will be conducting this Bible study on tonight. Praise God. So just um, want to say, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this blessed day, Father God, that you um, have allowed us to see. We thank you, Lord, for your mercies, for your grace. We thank you for your patience with us, Father God, and how you yet are still striving with us, Lord, and allowing us to grow in you, oh God. And Lord, we thank you that, Lord, for your chastisement. We thank you for uh, leading us and directing us, Father God. We thank you. We thank you for um, each brother and each sister that um, is present and each brother and sister, Lord, that sharpens us, Lord, and shares their testimony, oh God. We thank you for them, Lord, because each one um, is helping us helping us grow, helping us with their testimony. So I, I'm thankful for each brother and sister, Lord. And I just thank that, um, I just pray, excuse me, that you bless every word that is spoken on tonight. Father, I pray that the words that are spoken, that we will keep your word, Father, in our hearts that we may not sin against you, but that what we hear we will not just be hearers of the word. We'll be doers of the word. That your word will be us. We will become the word. We will walk in the word. And Father God, that we will we will walk in your statues and your ways, Lord. Help us to not only hear the word, but we have to receive it in order to walk it out and do it. So Lord, help us to receive your word in our hearts and in our souls on tonight. Father God, we thank you and we praise you just for being God. We thank you that, oh God, that you've um, called us, oh God. We thank you for that. We thank you for our Lord and Savior. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Lord that is um, in our lives and Lord that is striving with us. And he's our great teacher. We're thankful for Jesus just teaching us, teaching us your ways, Father. So I, I praise you. I thank you. God bless each and every person that's present on tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good to see everybody out there, Sister Lindy. Amen. 
Pastor Wayne. God bless you, brother and sister. Amen. God bless, brother. How y'all doing this week? Another week. Another week. That's right. Glad I was able to make it Sorry. tonight. You hear me? I want one thing I want to say before we get started. I'm so sorry, I forgot. I haven't been on in so long. I just wanted to remind everyone that um, please keep your mute buttons on so that we don't get the background distractions. And then when you get ready to speak, um, go, go ahead, take your mute button off. And then after you make your point or share, put your mute button back on so you can hear the feedback if anyone has any comments they would like to add or anything like that. So just want to be mindful of that. Um, so that was the main thing. I forgot that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Yep. But as we get in our word today, let us just um reflect back on last week. We we had a title in our last study last Tuesday called In Their Synagogue. And as we looked, we seen Jesus went about the city and villages and their synagogues, he said, teaching the word and healing them who were sick of their disease. He was taken it back. He was appalled because a lot of them were around there and in the synagogues were confused and without shepherd. So he said, he told his disciples to pray to the Lord of the harvest, which is the father and tell him to send help. Amen, hallelujah. Ain't that a blessing? <laughs> That's a blessing right there to be able to follow Jesus. In yeah, his it truly is a blessing. Yeah, Amen. It is. It's a blessing. So many following man right now that we be we have to be able to distinguish, you know, who Jesus is and what Jesus is calling for us to do. So as he went through those cities and villages and in their synagogue, remember he said in their synagogue. That wasn't his synagogue. He said in their synagogue, but he still went amongst them teaching teaching his word, trying to heal them and trying to get them correct. Amen. So as we get in here in this word today, we're going to look and we titled it, He that endureth to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. Now remember, this is a fight now. We got to fight according to the rules of the race. We have to fight according to the rules of what Christ Jesus has laid for us to fight. The race is not given to the swift but those that endure to the end. We got to pace ourselves. Yes, there's going to be tough challenges. Yes, there's going to be things up, up against us. Yes, there's going to be stuff in our flesh that's going to be trying to get us to throw away what God is trying to do in our life. But let us run this race. Let us endure. Let us be, you know, take our time. Hallelujah. Amen. Right here at Matthew 6. Sorry about that. Matthew 10. At 16, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpent and harmless as doves. Can't fight the same way we used to fight before. Jesus calls us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Remember, we still have to save ourselves and we still have to save the witness as well. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, Brother T, glad you could join us, brother. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you my brother. I kind of feel you were laughing at me, but I don't, but I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, never that, brother. We love you, brother. I, I know. I, In a good way, in a good way. How's the family doing tonight? Everybody's good. I can't complain. Yeah. Lamil, brother Dwayne. All right, T. How you doing? I'm good. Every day is good with <laughs> with our with our Father in Christ, with our Heavenly Father in Christ, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. So remember, we've been sent among wolves. We're told to be wise as serpents. And harmless as doves. Amen. Let us get in and continue in First Corinthians at six, starting at nine to twelve. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall inherit the kingdom of God? This is the Apostle Paul speaking in his first epistle to the Corinthians. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? 
be not deceived. A lot of people are out here deceiving people. You can jump around hip hop in the club and cuff people out and gang bang and say, you're going to shoot everybody and there's a heaven for you. Apostle Paul said, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor revilers. Amen. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Amen. Nor thieves, nor covets, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Now we spoke on Isaiah at 57 or Isaiah 55, where if you, you forsake your wicked ways and your unrighteous thoughts and you bring yourself unto the Lord, he'll give you an abundant pardon you abundantly so he's the pardon you from your past so when you get washed by the blood of jesus christ just like the apostle paul is talking to Corinth here but such were some of you up until that point we have a duty to remain unspotted and unblemished amen amen hallelujah now remember the fight. Jesus is helping us from the throne. Jesus has given us his power. He has put his power in our life that helps us. That's why we continue to bring ourselves in the world. We continue to allow Christ to cleanse us and keep us. Amen. In these trying times. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Uh, Derek. Yes, sir. You were saying, what's the scripture? Be wise. Uh, as a serpent and the harmless as dove. Oh, yeah. Be wise as a servant. Yeah. I, I, uh, I do believe Christian people, Christians, God people, mm -hmm. is very wise. Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man. And whatever they say, I know whatever they say to you, it could be something you disagree with. But when they finish, they wise and they, they and you were talking about the word, they put God's words with it. It just doesn't come out and say it. They, when they finish talking to you about whatever the situation is, they put God's word. Hmm. So they're going to point with that story, with, you know? with that conversation. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. I hear you, Brother Lemuel. See, the Bible is a way for us to live by and for us to follow. You know, the code of conduct. Everything is in here. That's why when you see Jesus, when he went down to the synagogue, all of those learned Pharisees and Sadducees of the university of that day, Jesus didn't study with them. But they was appalled at how this man was uncovering scriptures, having never learned with them. You hear me? I want to make a comment on that, too. That was good. Um, going back to the bring out that point that Brother Lemuel just said, I like that because the main thing he said was that God came about the people of God is that, you know, when they're given wisdom or when they're speaking, being able to give you um you know, doing so by using the word of God when they do so. And I was just thinking, it's the word that keeps us. And it's the word that has power. It's the word that leads us into, um, gives us the instructions and let us know what God's will is and to let us know um, how to walk and how we should be walking in righteousness. So it is the word that we need. I think that when we get to a place where um, we're not, speaking the words of God, then that means you're speaking your own words. Okay. And so we have to be mindful that um, the word is our, it, it's our lamp, it's our light, it's our, it's our way, it's our direction. It gives us instructions. It, um, it corrects us. So the word is everything. Everyone that is a child of God 
should be speaking the words of God. It, I mean, it should just be a part of us every day, part of our conversation when we're speaking to someone, because it is the word. It's the word that helps us to overcome. It, it's the power of the word. So I, I just want to, Brother Lemuel said that, and that just, that was wonderful because it's just a reminder that, you know, that word, we need that word, you know, as believers, we need the word and not only to know the word, we need to live the word. It needs to become who we are, whether it's in a comfortable situation or an a comfortable situation or an uncomfortable situation. God's word never changes and we have to accept his word, whether it's comfortable for us or not. You know, we have to learn how to swallow it all. You know, sometimes that word will come and it hits you all upside your head. All it'd be all <laughs> on your street telling you all about yourself. And you know, we have to yeah. be sure that we don't have that haughty attitude and spirit to where we only want to accept the good things that God tells us. You know, when it's when it's all good and it's comfortable, but those moments where it's correction, then we're not comfortable. We get haughty, we're bad attitude, you're you're rejecting the truth, you don't want to hear the truth, you know, and, and that's where we don't want to be. So back to what Lemuel said, it's all about the word, whether I like what I'm hearing or not. If it's the truth and if it's the word and anyone trying to dig for the truth, as believers, we should all be lovers of the word. Once you stop accepting the truth about whatever it is, whether it's the word of God or just truth about practical matters. You know, it could be a truth about a practical matter in life or in relationships. When the truth presents itself as believers, we should embrace it. Always. And also as yeah. believers, also as believers, we as Christians, we hear the truth and it's like recharging us, me and us. It's like hitting us upside the head saying, oh, yeah. Okay, I can I can follow up on reading more of the Bible. So I can present the scripture to these matters that are happening in my life. So yes, I need to brush up on more of the word. And for those who don't take it in wrong context, those who take it as a uplift, as lighting that fire under you again to just say okay yeah 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 yep yeah. or i'm right on track or i need to i need to step it up a little more and so yeah you know it's good it's good and then it's just good all the way around thank you amen amen one of the things that being believer is that that means we don't got it all together you know that means that we're leaning on the Lord for his strength. And where we fall short at, our brother or sister in Christ can come up and nurture at. There's always room to help each other get there. There's always room. When we come to Christ, we're imperfect. And God is doing the work in our life to bring us to be perfect. That's some time. That takes time. And, and we all, we all, you don't have things in our life that we are continuing to work on that the Lord who loved us before we even loved him or ourselves continue to work with us. If anybody deserved to abandon each other, guess what? The Lord deserved to abandon us. But he didn't abandon us. He stayed there. He continued to love us. He continued to get us to the other side. That's what we have to do for each other. Amen. Hallelujah. I was thinking about the word of God and you know what? I, I love the Lord because he's so patient with us. And I was thinking about the word, word of God, because I was thinking about in the, in the word, you know, even with God and his patience, he's so patient with us. He's patient with us when everybody else is wants to give up on us, but he's still right there. But I was thinking about the word where it said, um, I wish I had the scripture for you guys, but it was said, as I was a child, I spoke as a child. I acted as a child, but when I became a man, you know, I put away those childish things. So, and then there's another verse um, that I was thinking of, but the thing is throughout the Bible, you will see where there's times where God allows us to grow, but it helps you to know with those scriptures that there is an expectation that we should always be growing. 
We should not be in the same place. A one-year-old should not still be in the same place as a one-year-old when they're eight years old. So th there's an expectation from the Lord that we should be growing. And, and that's the scripture. I love that scripture because it lets us know what the expectations are with us. Well, we definitely got to have that scripture because it's one thing of saying it and it's another to be able to point to it to show. Do anybody know what that scripture is? When I was a child, I spoke uh, as a that's child. In Caribbean. That's in Caribbean. But, when I, in but when I became a man, I put away childish things. I forgot what scripture that was. If somebody had know it or knows where it's at. I, I just read that the other day and I just cannot think of where it is. It's in First, it's in first Corinthians. Okay, let me find it. Let me see. I should have had it. And that's definitely a beautiful scripture because during that during that time of you know the apostle talking to the Corinthians, you know it's it's about growing. It's always about growing. But even the apostle Paul at this is. stage and how strong he was, <laughs> he still was going through things. Just like when he explained there was a thorn being in his side, and the Lord didn't take that thorn away out of his side because he said my strength is made perfect in your weakness so you're going to have weakness you're going to have weaknesses because thank you so much oh go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead Dwayne well I was just saying that I think it's first Corinthians 13 yeah. verse 11 man did you get that, honey? First Corinthians 13, 11. I think she's trying to talk, but you, you she got to unmute herself. She thinks she's trying to talk, but she's, she's muted. Can you hear me? Right now we can. Oh, I'm sorry. I think my button was, my mute button was on. I found it here. It says First Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I like that because in our infancy, in our baby stage, we will speak like a child. We'll say things. We'll understand like a child. Our understanding may not be mature. But at some point, it's saying that it, it matured. And it, it, it got to a point to where it was at a mature state. So that's all of us, you know, and I just, I thank God that God allowed, he allows us to mature. He allows us, I can honestly say that I can see maturity from myself from the first time I came into the Lord until now. I shouldn't still be acting and speaking and understanding the same way I did um, when I got, came into the knowledge of the Lord 20 years ago. If my understanding hasn't grown or my maturity hasn't grown intellectual wise, then there's something wrong. And we got, and it's up to us to find out what's wrong. Only we can do that. We have to take inventory of ourselves, but we should always be growing in, in our maturity level. Anybody else want to we, should, we also should always want to grow. There you go. Closer to God. You know what I mean? There you go. Amen. Anybody else want to speak on that? Amen. Yeah, this, I just real quick, this study right here is tasting just as good as this beans and rice I'm eating. Let's keep going. I'm loving it. I good, love it, Brother good, good word. Good word. All right. Yeah, it's excellent I'm word. And I'm loving I, it. I agree with Sister Michelle. You know, uh, sometimes it's just good for us to be able to look back and see our growth because that will also continue to encourage us to grow. Right. Amen. So, um, yeah, I like that a lot. Absolutely. Amen. You know, one thing I love about the Lord is that it's not designed for just to be no one man show. I love how the God brings us all together under the umbrella of one body. Under the umbrella of one body, Look what we're encouraged to do right here. Look at Timothy when he was young in his ministry. Look what the Apostle Paul told him in 1 Timothy at 4, starting at 13. Till I come, you can almost see Jesus in this when you hear him. Give attendance 
be at the study, to reading, to encouraging each other, to the doctrine, the teaching. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying of the hands of the Presbyterian church. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself fully unto them that thy prophet may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing so, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. This is beautiful right here. Because what this is telling you is Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. A lot of people are not doing that. A lot of people are letting another individual's mind be in them. Let God use you. Let God use you instead of you being used by man. And I love this right here because as we continue to come to these studies, to be in attendance, reading, encouraging each other, and paying attention to the doctrine. Remember 1 John at 2, 24 and 25. Continue on in that which dropped on you. If you continue on with that was dropped on you, you will continue on in the Father and in the Son. And that is the promise to eternal life. See, the promise to eternal life, it ain't saying Jesus is the Father and the Father is Jesus. So you have to pay attention to the doctrine. If not, you're going to be enamored by these slick people and you're going to be took. Is it just me or is Brother Derek cutting in and out? Am I cutting in and out? I can hear you. Yeah, you're real sharp. It's, yeah, yeah, I can it's hear just, you. It's just you, sister. Okay. Let me try to, yeah. okay. <laughs> just my no, phone. Just okay. Well, that's really okay. important. That's really important that we encourage each other. That's yes. really important that we be at the study, that we pay attention to the doctrine. We neglect not the gift that is in us, that was given to us by the laying of the hands of the body. We got to meditate on this word so we give ourselves wholly unto them. It's almost like putting yourself in this word to where it becomes a part of your life. It starts to reflect on you. That's how much you've been in the word. And to continue on in them so we can save ourselves and those that hear us. Hey, man. Hey, I, was, I was just talking. To, oh, my bad. Go ahead, T. Oh, go ahead, man. I, just real quick, man, real real quick, man. My son, he sees me, and he's like, we used to get into it all the time. He's 22, and now every time he's around me, he's so respectful. He's always looking to hear me, and something in my mind is going, he's just going to go back to doing what he do. Mm -hmm. But then I got a date with him to take him and bring him around us around his brothers and the closer it gets i've been fighting with myself oh, i'm not gonna take him oh, i'll take him oh, i'm not gonna take him he's just gonna and then more stuff has been coming up what he's been doing but every time he's coming around me straight a student and it's like dude you see what you're doing is wearing off so why wouldn't you take him and like like the word just said you don't be stingy of what you got you know, I have to give like it was given to me. So I got my answers, and it, it, but I'm saying, though, it keeps biting me. And I keep saying, nah, I'm not going to let it win, though. You know, it's just, wow. And that's how much he does not want us to win. The, I don't even like saying that, but the darkness don't want us to, in the light. He don't want me to bring this uh, another soul, you know, and I and 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 I know why because this is a powerful soul that I have, that I'm bringing. I I just answered that question just now. Thank you, Jesus. So, yeah, man, you know, nobody like the dirt words like Dar said. You know, we are all in it together, and that's what makes it more powerful. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. That's it. Amen. 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 Um, one thing I was I was talking about this but like yesterday I think at work or something but it's like the way we want to add God to our life is like the way you wake up in the morning and brush your teeth uh, the more you add God the more it works 
You know what I mean? So adding a word to your life is like, okay, it's it's normal. You want to make it a normal thing. That's how it works. Even when you're doing bad, normal, normalize, normalize God in your in you. You normalize the word. You normalize, I man. I gotta go to the word. I gotta. Uh, I, this is wrong. I gotta go to the word. You know, you normalize. You get home. Oh, the way you feel, like, man, I'm mm-hmm. hungry, hungry for the word. No matter what you're at in the state of mind, no matter what the situation look like, it's temporary. It was mm-hmm. raining the other day. The sun came out. Normalize the word in your life like that. Mm-hmm. Praise God. That was awesome. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I like what she was saying. Yeah. I like what she was saying. Pink strong. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Do y'all was thinking about what Brother Dwayne was just saying. That's powerful. And I think, Brother Dwayne, what you said is as you know, men and women of God, once we really grasp that, once we really grasp that, what you just said, because that's what makes the difference between just reading the word or just being religious with the word, you know? But when you really become the word, you have to become the word. Like it has to be, it has to be you. Like you really have to become the word. Like you're walking in, whatever you're reading, you're walking in that, you're doing that. It's an action. And that makes all the difference. That's where we get our power because that's the obedient part. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So you can read the word. It's just like when someone's talking to you, you know, people can talk to you and you can hear what they say, but are you listening to what they say? That's a big difference because if you got ears, you can hear, I might hear you. Yeah. I hear some noise. I hear something, but to listen takes attentiveness. It takes you drawing in and holding on and paying attention to what, what you're hearing. So people can hear you. That's like, you know, you're talking to someone and, and you're saying something and you think they hear you and you, you're talking. And then after you get through talking, everything you just said, they they ask you, they ask you questions about, you know, they're they're asking you about what you just gave them the answer to. But the thing is being attentive. And I liked what the brother said, because we do have to become the word. It has to be like who we are, like really walk in it. Like, let that be you where you don't even think about it. Somebody cuss you out or say something wrong to you. Your flesh used to rise up, but it's become your normal that you say a kind word. Because in the word, it says not to respond back with the same, with that same spirit, but to respond back with good. So that's the type of thing that has to become a part of us. Like, we don't even think about it. It's just something we do naturally. So I just wanted to add that that was good. And that's what yeah, that's what I tried to do. Yeah. yeah. That was really good. Yeah. Um, and it just reminds me that I have a heart that just needs to be filled. And the more that it's filled, the better I can do God's will. Amen. Yes, we have to be filled for sure. I like that, Sister Lindy, yeah. because yeah. It, it's impossible to let that become your norm if you're not filling up your heart with the word of God. You won't exactly. know what to respond. Yeah, so we have to have it yeah. in us. It's like a deposit when we go to the bank. We have to yep. deposit every day, all, all not just once a day, but throughout our day, we have to be de- depositing the Lord in us, his Holy right. Spirit. Whatever's right. of God, right. we need to be making those deposits. Mm-hmm, because amen. if you're depositing, if you're depositing or getting more of the world in you than you are of God in you, there's an unbalance. That means you're going to be right. more worldly. You don't have enough God in you, right? So the more yeah. of God that we put in us and depositing and filling us up and prayer and everything with the Lord and you know we're purging everything else because we don't want the other stuff in us. So that right. the more of God you put in, it purges out the other stuff. Exactly. But if you're not depositing, you know, you can't go to the bank and draw out some money if you ain't got no money in there. You can go right, to the, yeah. machine, the machine if you want to. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing coming right. out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if you could, de- yeah. So if we ain't making deposit, God deposits in us, then when we need that, we need, we need, when we need the strength and the power and we need that spirituality and, and, the, and, 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 and the word or whatever we need at that time, 
You didn't deposit that in, so there's nothing to take out. Right. Yeah, that's good. Just doing show. That's really good. So right now, Amen. so right now, this is a good moment just to praise the Lord for us who have come a long way, and it is evident in our life that Jesus has brought us a long way, and it's it's a wonder, and it's beautiful just to be able to praise that that Christ is working in our life. And he, as we continue to bring ourselves to the word, he's going to continue to work in our life. He's going to continue to work in our life. Now, right here at 1 Timothy, let's go back to 4 and 15. What you guys were just saying is right here. Meditate upon these things, what the Apostle Paul is saying. He's saying to meditate on the word. Give thyself wholly unto them. Give yourself to the word wholly that thy prophet may appear to all. You profiting from that word because you're giving yourself wholly unto it. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing so, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So as we bring ourselves to the word, as we keep on getting acclimated, as we keep on getting familiar, as we keep on allowing God just to, just to paste us to his word, it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be working in our life. We're getting purged slowly, but surely as you keep bringing yourself to the word. Now, some areas might be slower than others. That's okay. I can look at each one of our lives. If I know you and see Jesus working in your life. That's a beautiful thing. Because the ball is starting. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's get on the board right here at Matthew 10, 17 and 22. Now remember, last week we spoke on in their synagogues. And Jesus went through the cities and the villages and in their synagogues. And he was taking them back because a lot of them were confused as having no shepherds. But be aware of men, for they will deliver you up to the council. And they will scourge you in their synagogues. So they're going to deliver you up to the council and they're going to whoop you in their synagogues. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought on what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father, which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Man, this is powerful right here. That's why Jesus said when his mother and his brethren were trying to get into the breath, but he couldn't because the press was too big. Who's my mother? Who's my brethren? Only them that are doing the will of my father in heaven. That's my mother and brethren. And as you keep on going through this life, you're going to see that worldly family. It's not them. It's the spirit that's working in them. The opposition is working in them and against you. We have to be very careful in this hour. Kids is going to be killing their parents. They're going to be going against them. People are going to be, man, it's sad to even mention this. But this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So we got a long road coming up. We got some things that are going to be going on, and it's happening now. It is. And it's happening Jesus right now. Christ. We need Jesus Christ to fight this. We need to continue to stand our word. We need to continue to come together. We need to continue mm. to encourage each other. We need to continue to be in our word. This ain't the time for look at you, me, me, look at you. This is the time for us to come together. Yeah. This is the time for me to grab that oar out of your hand and get rowing it for you if I got to. I don't know. If it's a, my a spirit, but I, uh, every every day I think about 
things, it's a lot going to happen. And we're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to be close to God, Jesus Christ. Because mm -hmm. there's so much that's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Hey, another Amen, thing. Brother, let me know. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thing, it's, just, it's another, a whole lot coming. Another nice. thing we got to really understand, too, is that this is a long life process. Once we once we convert to God, God knew already. That's why he's very patient with us. But we also have to not get weary and with the uncertainty of that we're not good enough. It's a life process. We cannot skip the process. We have to go through it. Amen. Yeah. Man. One of the things about in this hour, that's why we keep saying, can bring ourselves to the word so we can receive of the Holy Ghost and allow the spirit that the Father sitting of his son to be in us. Because in this hour, as we move into these things right here, people against brother against brother, family against family, kids against family, the, the church buildings are going to be using you whooping you, using you, delivering you up, because the spirit in them is of man. The spirit in them is of man, even though it's hidden behind the illusion of being for Christ. But you got to be able to have the spirit so you can follow Christ in the word. Christ told the woman at the rail, neither the time going to come, woman, where you going to worship in Jerusalem or in the mountain. Worship the Father. That's in your temple which is your reasonable service. Don't be running around talking about where you're going to worship at. You going building the building, looking for a place to worship at. Worship the Father in your temple. Bring yourself to the word. Neglect not the gift. Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I'm moving in a critical time right now. So there's a lot of things that's going to be happening in this world. And only what we do in Christ and for Christ is going to be able to sustain us. All that on the fence, playing back and forth. There's a couple studies here, more world there. We got to be, we got to get ourselves grounded. Now we're all going through a fight. We're all going through things. There ain't nobody on this line that ain't going through nothing. Jesus is still with us. He's still holding us. We have a war in our members. We have a war around us. Things are going on. But as we keep continuing, like the way it said, bring ourselves to the word, the Lord's going to continue to work things out. One of the things about the great women and men of God is that they kept God's name in their mouth, regardless of what they were going through. Praise God. I like that. I was just thinking that, you know, as I was listening to you speak, but I was just thinking, you know, as, as children of the Lord, you know, men and women of God, there's so much and so many things that we contend with, right? Yeah. And that we have going on. We have to keep God first, but we have to stay focused because when you think about it, as a believer, you are, you are, it's so many things you're contending with because you're focused on your own walk and your own salvation. You're focused on um, if your ministry, whatever ministry God has given you. So there's work in, in things within your ministry and people you have to deal with and you're dealing with the public and things like that. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of your family members, um, different things that, you know, you, you, you know, we got to be mindful, make sure we're in our word. Um, we got to stay prayerful. We're doing ministry. We're out praying for other people. Um, we're maybe helping other people with their ministry. But the main thing I wanted to say, and we're fighting that enemy daily. We're fighting against the demonic spirits of the world, just, you know, in, in our day-to-day -day life, whether you're at the grocery store fighting demonic spirits or you're on your job, the job fighting demonic spirits, so you're fighting against that every day. You you know, so we're contending with so much. You know, you have children that are, are maybe not saved. You're contending with that. 
But one thing I wanted to say, everything that we're contending with, one thing we cannot lose sight of is the greatest work that we will do as believers is within ourselves. We can't get distracted. So we spread ourselves thin and we're here and we're there and we're there and we're everywhere else. But we're neglecting ourselves. We're neglecting ourselves. We have to we have to make sure that we're working on ourselves. Our greatest work, no matter what we're doing in ministry, no matter what we're doing anywhere else, our greatest focus and concentration should be on the inner. It should be on, on our uh, excuse me, our own personal salvation and self. What's going on in our hearts? What's going on in our minds? What's going on with us? It's easy to get so involved in so many other things around us that you can neglect yourself and you're not even realizing really what's going on with you. So we have to do that because at the end of the day, when we stand before God, that's good. We have ministries, but everybody in your ministry ain't going to be standing before God with you. Each one of us has to stand and give an account for ourselves. I have to give an account for Michelle. My husband ain't going to be with me, my kids. Each one of us have to give an account. So at the end of the day, we can't neglect ourselves in our own walk. And we, we have to be honest and be able to evaluate where am I at? We have to soul search ourselves for, for sure. Keep ourselves together. Amen. Amen. Now, right here at First Timothy, at four and one. Now the Spirit speak expressively that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. This is important right here. And I like what my wife just said, we're gonna have to pay attention to not so much of everybody else, but to ourselves. Because seducing spirits is gonna come and they're gonna try to drive you, not drive you, not try to, but according to the scripture, many is gonna fall away from the faith. They were standing right, but they gave their ear to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. These were people who were enticing. Yes, they come with a little bit of truth, but if you ain't looking for the main ingredient, if you ain't looking for the main course, you're going to be driven off your stands. I think it's important for, for believers to understand what you're getting into. And what I mean by that is, you say you want eternal life. What does the Father require for eternal life? First John 2, 24 through 25. Continue on the doctrine of the Father and the Son. Those that don't believe that Jesus walked the earth, they say Jesus was the Father. You don't believe that Jesus walked the earth. That's not eternal life for you. You have to believe that he is on the right-hand side in heaven with the Father. You believe he walked the earth and he rose, gave gift unto men, and he seated on the right-hand side of the Father. You have to believe that. Yes, all the other stuff is true. Holiness. Know this in church. Know that. All of that is true. But if that man you listening to, if he ain't sent from God and he ain't continue on in the Father and the Son, you better be careful. That's that giving heed to seduce the spirits and doctrines of devil. They sound good, but do they have the right ingredient that gets you over the edge? Anybody else before we wrap up? Have to endure. This ain't about following man. This is about what God is doing in each and every one of us. Bring yourself to the word. Get to know Jesus for yourself. Get to know the father. Let him draw you to his son. Let him draw you to the power so we can continue to please the father and the son by growing in his word. Ourself. Like my wife was saying, it's good to do outside ministry, but what about ourselves? 
God has brought us a mighty long way and we still got work to do. We still got work to do. Don't you know, I remember I was sleeping on couches and paying to sleep on couches and got all these loud cars driving around. I didn't know life. I didn't know nothing. Going in and out of jail, sleeping there, giving my money away to these people, bailing out every minute, thinking that's slick. I didn't have life. Jesus has brought me a long way, gave me a wife, a family, a home, a career, all of this. This wasn't my doing. If you left it up to me, I'd still be in jail right now. So I owe it to the Father of Jesus for bringing me thus far. If I don't even make it to the kingdom, I'm thankful for this. Because I shouldn't be here right now. But we're going to continue to strive. We're going to continue to continue the journey because he ain't done with us. If he was done with each and every one of us, we wouldn't be here right now. Trust me. The Father and Jesus got more power than you think. Satan don't got no power at all. You just woke up in his kingdom, like first, like Job said in one six, to come and show ourselves before the Lord. And when we got here, Satan was here amongst us. Amen. Anybody else got any words they want to say? I think the word for tonight is accountability. Hmm. That just really resonates with me with what we're talking about tonight. Um, yes. And just being accountable to God, being accountable to Jesus, being accountable to the Holy Spirit, and being accountable to ourselves. That's it. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we have to, yeah, ooh, that was good. I like that. Accountability. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Amen. I can already say that you haven't given your life to the Lord. Amen, brother. See, I see you got your girl on there. Amen. Hallelujah. Like we always say, if you haven't given your life to the Lord, Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, that God the Father raised Jesus, his son, on the third day, thou shalt be saved. Now, coming up soon, we're going to do a study on this because we need to examine when Paul and Silas was in jail and what they told the Roman individual. We must understand that scripture comes together. Not only do you have to confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus on the third day, but you have to get baptized. Why? Because Jesus said in John 3 and 5, Man cannot enter into the kingdom of God unless he's been born by water and by spirit. Those two scriptures go together. Jesus just got to bring them to you together and hand them to you so you can know how they fit together. We can't just confess with our mouth and get into the kingdom. If you do that, that would make Jesus a lie at John 3 and 5. And we know he's not that. Amen. So they both go together. After you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, get baptized. Amen. And we already know with Matthew 28 and 18, you bat that's, the, that's Jesus speaking, who's been given all power in heaven and in earth on how we must baptize. Baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And another, they won't follow. You got to learn how to hear Jesus' voice through the word. Amen. Amen. Before we close out tonight, hon, I was just thinking, um, maybe, what do you think about um, next month, the first Tuesday of next month, we do communion. We haven't done communion in a while. Um, do you think that would be a good idea, the first Tuesday of next month, of December? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's do that because I just feel like, yeah, we haven't done that in a while. So that would be good. And then maybe we'll send out reminders up until that point so that everyone will be, you know, don't forget. But yeah, the first Tuesday of next of December, we'll do communion. That would be the fifth. Of That'd be good. Now. Fifth okay. Communion. Oh, that's the fifth. Okay, the fifth. Okay, good. 
You guys can mark that down too if you have a calendar, but we'll try to send reminders out, you know, and speak on it on next Tuesday and so forth so that we don't forget. But yeah, let's do, we we should do communion. Yeah. Need to do that more often. So that'll be good. Thank you. Does anybody got anything else they want to say? Brother Lee, we ain't heard from you. Pray us out, brother. God bless you, sir, for joining us tonight. See you okay, you guys ready? Amen. Okay, let us focus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. Lord, we just thank you for this Bible study. Lord, we ask you right now to just touch each and every one that's in this study, Lord. Lord, just not touch them, Lord, tug at their heart. Open their ears. Let them be receptive of your word. Father, we ask you right now to build a hedge of protection around each and every one of us, Lord. Father, we ask you to bless our family. Lord, we ask you right now to keep us, Lord. But most of all, Lord, let it be closer to you. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. Lord, we thank you for this ministry. But most of all, we thank you for your beloved son, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Yes, hallelujah. Beautiful, brother. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. amen. 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 I want to say, look. You know, we talk the whole study. We talk about how we need to constantly reproof ourselves, read the word for ourselves. It's really important, especially right now, because the goal is not to be misled. When we don't study the word, we allow ourselves to be vulnerable to being misled. The Amen. devil knows the word better than all of That's us. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So we have to constantly engulf ourselves in the word. Look for it. It's important. That's all I want to say. Amen. You guys have a good rest of the evening. And just, man, keep your mind on Jesus. Wherever you go through, keep your mind on him. Like we did on the other word with Peter coming out the boat. Keep your eye on Jesus. The wind is going. Amen. It's wicked. The world is wicked. The kids is going mm -hmm. crazy. We yeah. are crazy. Other people on the side of us going crazy. But keep your mm -hmm. eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Absolutely. You guys have a good rest Very of well, the day. Very well. away and didn't realize when I wasn't sharing the response from you guys that I was on mute again. <laughs> <laughs> Me and this mute button, we fight. Amen. Um, but yeah, um, I like what Brother T was saying. Um, but let's let's think about throughout the week. Think about accountability. Yeah, and how yeah, we can fill fill our hearts amen. up with God's word, mm -hmm. so that we can second nature would be to to do the word, do the actions. It would just be automatic. Amen. Put me on automatic pilot, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys have a blessed rest of the week. You as well, Sister Lindy. God bless you, brothers. You. Good to see everyone tonight. You yeah. You. God warm. bless you all. It's cold out there. Stay warm. Okay. Yeah, it's getting cold out there. Yeah. Take care, everybody. See Good you night. next week. Good night. Oh, okay.